Hello, and welcome to Marquette Live. Hopefully this chaotic week will lead to a relaxing weekend. But for now, take a break from your studies because we have a great show lined up for you tonight discussing fashion, the obsession that is Snapchat, girl problems, and even two guests bringing us live performances. I'm Kira Collins, and thanks for joining us on Marquette Live. Special guest favorite Miss Marlo Marisi will be discussing the fashions of none other than sorority girls. There are plenty of Greek life gals across campus, so let's hear what the ladies have to say about the sister style. Where am I coming up to? Hey, all you fashion lovers out there, I'm Francesca Reed, your fashion expert here at Marquette Live. My two other um, lovely ladies are away, so I decided to bring in Marlo Marisi, who is a member of Alpha Phi and an expert on what to wear and what not to wear when it comes to sorority fashion. Welcome, Marlo. Thanks, Fran. So, Marlo, tell me what you should wear to like a formal, you guys have formal dances, right? Right. Tell me what, you know, is appropriate for wearing to formal. Okay, so our formal is kind of like um, the closest thing you would get to like a homecoming dance, but you can't confuse the, st the fashion. So formal for us is a lot more classier than a homecoming was, you know, like the homecoming dresses mm -hmm. had that like yeah. cheapy material. Yeah. So this is, you can do whatever you want. You can wear tight, short. Um, she's wearing lace. Check out the guys in the back. The I know. guys dress up so great. Guys, that's what you need to wear. Yeah. Some suspenders. Um, it's black tie most of the time. Um, a lot of bright colors. No long dresses. So, yeah, yeah. you know. That's what I was going to ask. Like, is it long, short? Is it more short dresses? It's more short dresses. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's not too short where you're twerking on the dance floor. Oh, and, no. Know, <laughs> backing up. <laughs> Um, so, just a lot of bright colors. Um, yeah, I like these. Those are nice, match. bright colors. Yeah, something flowy so you can get your da dance on, you know. Of course. Um, high heels and something that you won't get too warm in. So, that's okay. our formal. Awesome. Okay, so next I know they got, you guys have your chapter meetings every single week. Mm -hmm. So, what do, you know, what do you wear to those? Because it's every single week. So, like, how many, you know, you have so many outfits. So. Exactly. So simply wear? put, um, what we wear for chapter is what you would wear to an interview. So this girl has on like nice dress pants and a nice top and a statement necklace. Yeah, that's really cute. And um, <laughs> so we have some models here. Yeah, so we have two models from Alpha Phi, um, Adrian and K-Pal, Kristen Powers. And so tell me who's wearing what to wear and who's wearing what not to okay, wear. Okay, so Kristen has what to wear. So what you would wear to an interview is the same as what you would wear to a chapter. So nice dress pants, medium-sized heels, not too high. Um, you would wear a button-up, you know, collared shirt with a nice sweater. You could also wear a dress, some sort of statement necklace, like k Powell's rocking over there. Um, a watch is good, any kind of like simple jewelry, less is more, and um, just something that's classy and you know you represent yourself well. On the other hand, what not to wear? We got our fashionable Adrian up in here, mm -hmm. and AIDS is wearing what you would not want to be seen wearing at Chapter. Some, she looks like she's walk shaming it to Chapter. Ugg boots is a no no for. You know, sororities get that stigma, like, oh, all sorority girls wear leggings and Ugg boots. Definitely not. Um, the twerk team captain shirt, not cutting it. Um, and the one hoop and the bun. You got to have your hair looking professional. Actually put some time into your hair like Kristen did over there. Yeah, Kristen looks so professional and just so beautiful. So now, Marlo, tell me what a potential sorority <coughs> member should not wear to recruitment. Okay. So to recruitment, um, don't wear, I would st um, stay away from black dresses because black dresses don't really make you stand out. Like you're here with 600, 700 girls, you're trying to stand out, you're trying to impress. It's almost like, I tell people, it's almost like you're going through a dating process, okay. but it's with girls. Um, <laughs> okay, so going off of that though, you're trying to impress these girls, but not like guys. So no cleavage, like this girl kind of has a lot of cleavage going yeah. on. Don't want to show off that. Um, you also don't want a lot of bangles and like watches. First of all, the watches 
you're going to be tempted to like look down. Mm -hmm. You don't want the girls to think you're not interested in what's going on. Also, bangles, you'll be shaking a lot of girls' hands, like every room you go into. It'll get annoying, right? Right. Yeah. Less is more with the jewelry. Um, so that's what not to wear to recruitment. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So I see a lot of girls wearing their letters all around campus. So tell me what is appropriate to wear with your letters because you're representing your sorority, you know, with when you're wearing those t-shirts or sweatshirts. So should you wear like, you know, short shorts or like <laughs> what shouldn't you wear with letters? Okay, well you said it perfectly. When you're out there wearing your letters, one girl is re representing like 100 girls. So you want to dress um, like you would want to see your other sisters. So when you're wearing your letters, um, always do your hair. You don't want to have, like Adrian had, some like ratchet looking <laughs> thing on the top of your head. No, we um, don't want that. <laughs> you can also wear pearls, um, simple jewelry, some nice pants, jeans most of the time. I mean, if you're wearing like a loose enough shirt, leggings is mm -hmm. fine with like riding boots or something yeah. like that. Cute cardigan. Um, but like you said, no cut off shorts that have your butt cheeks hanging out. Um, should you cut the t-shirt? You know how girls cut t-shirts at all? Is that like a no-no when it comes to sororities? Not really. As long as it's done well, you can cut them into like a tank top, mm -hmm. like something like that. But if you're trying to cut like a low V, yeah. you know, that's probably not okay. Yeah. So basically just don't be inappropriate is kind of exactly. what you're... Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so now that you know what to wear and what not to wear, we expect you to be on your A game at all times. For Marla Marisi, I'm Francesca Reed. Stay stylish, Marquette. Thanks, ladies. I'll definitely look into some of those ideas for an interview, and hopefully you sorority gals picked up some great tips from our fashionistas. Up next, Lexi has some talk about the fad that still has not faded, Snapchat. Hey Marquette Live, this is your pop culture host Lexi Dahlberg and I'm really excited to be talking about Snapchat this week. Snapchat is a new and interactive app that allows users to take pictures and easily send them to anyone on their friends or contact list. Snapchat is a really fun app because it allows you to send pictures but only for a limited amount of time. You can also choose to draw or write on your pictures which kind of helps clarify sometimes what the picture is that you're sending. And not only can you send pictures on Snapchat, you can also choose to send a video. That's just as easy as taking a picture. All you have to do is hold down the button in the middle and wait till you're done recording. Now Snapchat does limit your videos to 10 seconds, but you can choose to make them a lot shorter. And just like pictures, you can choose to write or add text to them to explain maybe what's going on. This is a great way to brighten someone's day or totally embarrass your friends. Either way, it's another way that Snapchat is very innovative and totally fun to use. If you remember from my last segment, we talked about selfie etiquette. Though I believe that some of those etiquettes do apply to Snapchat, I think that the more comfortable you get with the friends that you're Snapchatting, the less attractive your pictures get. And don't get me wrong, I think that is totally awesome and totally fun because I know I like nothing better than to receive a ridiculous looking picture of a friend from home. There are many reasons why Snapchat is so great, but primarily, at least for us college students, I think Snapchat is a great way to keep in touch with people we might otherwise lose touch with. I also Snapchat with my family. Believe it or not, we've gotten my mom and grandpa onto Snapchat, and it's always great to get pictures from home, even if they only last for a couple seconds. Snapchat is such an easy app and so interactive that I appreciate that it's getting so much more popular. I think it's a lot more fun to receive a Snapchat than just a boring old text message. I like seeing what people are talking about and what they're witnessing. Overall, Snapchat is a really cool way to communicate with friends, family, or anyone that you feel like you want to snap a picture to. It's as easy as point, snap, and send. With that in mind, keep on snapping, Marquette. This is Lexi Dahlberg from Marquette Live. I'm definitely guilty of sending Snapchats while walking to classes and definitely end up walking into things instead. Um, up next, we are hearing from our favorite sassy and sweet ladies and maybe even a boy. 
Stay tuned for Girl Problems. Welcome back to Girl Problems, a segment where we don't talk smack, we just state facts, okay? <laughs> I am one of your three fabulous hosts, Jesse Clark. I'm Najere. And I'm Kiwi Fabulous. And we have a special guest in studio with us today. Some of you guys might think after watching our segment that we're just a group of bitter, man-hating females, but that is not the case. We have somebody here with us who, in <laughs> fact, does have a Y chromosome and some insight into the male mind, Mr. Dan Shergan. Thank Howdy. you for being here today, Dan. <laughs> Okay, so the topic that me. we are hitting on today is, okay. can guys and girls actually be just friends? From a guy perspective, what do you think? I think it's very possible for guys and girls to be just friends under a certain set of circumstances. Okay. Um, I don't think it's possible for a guy and a girl to meet and just immediately be friends mm -hmm. and stay friends. I don't, uh, there's gotta be some sort of relationship turmoil that happens, so the two of you completely uh, lose all of the attraction to each other. So you've got to essentially break up with each other before you can actually be friends. Hmm. Okay, what do you guys think? Can guys and girls be friends? Hey, I feel like with that, that's like the opposite of what I think. I feel like if you guys have dated before, that there is no way after that you guys can be friends. Like, if you've dated and broke up, like, there's always gonna be feelings there. There's always gonna be something there that you're gonna still be like, oh, I remember when we used to do this, or I remember when we used to do that, or it's just not, it's never gonna be just friends. Mm -hmm. See, I disagree, because I have a best friend who I dated for three years, and I think we're perfectly okay. Girl. Okay, so you guys don't, <laughs> y'all don't kiss? No. Y'all don't. Y'all, girl, you know okay, you don't, y'all know what's gonna be on blast <laughs> on TV right now. <laughs> all right, all right, I ain't gonna put you on blast, but. I know relationship you're talking right. about questionable. But, okay. Okay, Where you no, progress. Look, look, look. The way I see it is, guys and girls being friends, I think that at one, in almost every case, one of them may see the other as just a friend, but one of them liked the other at exactly. some okay. point or another. I, I agree with that. Whether the girl didn't like the guy, the guy liked her, or they were attracted to each other or something, because guys and girls don't, unless you're put in that environment with a class or a job or something, you don't just come up and start being friends out of thin exactly. air. Exactly, and that's why, yeah, that's yeah, why I don't I do think. that friend thing with my man, nuh-uh. <laughs> my friend, my man is not gonna have no female best friend. Like, that's just not gonna slide. All right, see, all right, okay. so you go see, ahead. See, here's what I'm saying. In, in order for you to like have a best friend that is a guy, because I have, I have a girl who is my best friend. I dated her when I was like 14 and we broke up and we've been best friends ever since. And the reason that can happen is because we dated and then we broke up, which means I really didn't like her for a very long time. I would go so far as to say I extremely disliked her. I could never <laughs> say hate because she's my best friend. I love you, Elise. <clears throat> but I almost hated this girl for a little little while after we broke up before we started hanging out again. Okay, and can the, I ask how did you break up? Was it on bad terms or was it um, a mutual decision? I've got this really, really keen ability to ruin everything <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> quickly. Actually, so right. so, so I say it did not end on great <laughs> terms, but it could have ended worse. But after we broke up, we did not talk for a little while. Mm -hmm. It was probably three, four months before we started uh, talking as friends again, and unless like we saw each other, but it was a while before we had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so with that, like I think Time. that attraction, if, if you don't explore the attraction, it will always be there. Hmm. But so you're saying a guy and a girl cannot just meet each other and then just automatically will just be friends. Like right, because then that's when you get what Jesse was talking about. That's when you've got someone like someone else, mm -hmm. and unless you address it, unless you guys at, like, actually look at their, the possibility of a relationship and then realize it's a bad thing, which the only way to really do that is to date and break up, I don't think you're ever going to actually get over the fact that like, I, I liked her and she didn't like me back, so I'm never actually gonna get over it versus we liked each other, we dated, it didn't work, so now we can just be friends. That actually makes sense. I can see that. But for me, yeah. I mean, maybe it's just a personal decision. I feel after you've dated somebody or crossed that line of friendship, you know what I mean? Whether it's emotionally yeah. or physically, anyway, you never really look at that person the same. Like after you get exactly. to that point, exactly. like after you get like after you're like, okay, I've seen you. 
And right, like distance. you've been naked and it's before. Just like, I've seen you naked. So and it's just kind of like different, you know. It's like okay, okay, oh, oh, hey, okay. all right. We got, we got to wrap the conversation up. Okay. But any final points you want to make on behalf of guys? Because we, we be doing some slamming. So um, on behalf of guys, I would just like to apologize for all Thank the horrible yes. things. Thank I'm you. Sorry, every girl, we're the we're kind of the you. worst. Thank you. It's, that is but so yes. In in defense of the gender, uh, there are a couple of good ones out there. I'm gonna keep looking. A few. Looking, a I don't few. Know a few. So I'm gonna keep looking. That like two being or three. said, my yes. Twitter is D Shrug. <laughs> feel free to just go ahead and hit me up. I'm, I'm, I'm single. Feel, I'm just right. saying. Okay. Nice single, plug. Nice plug. All right. That is all the time we have today. We will see you next week. I'm Jesse. I'm Najere. And I'm Kiwi Fabulous. With our guest Dan Shurgan, and this has been Girl, Girl Problems. Problems. Thank you, girls. And Dan, thank you so much for providing us with some lovely insight. Up next, we are going to take a break, but stay tuned because we have a special musical guest coming your way. Okay. Waking up to ash and dust, I wipe my brow. The lovely Kristen Powers will be introducing us to some of Marquette University's very own musical talent. Kristen? Thanks, Kira. Hey, everyone. I'm Kristen Powers. Today, we have Dave Sajak and Zach Gracie in studio live performing a cover of Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. Take it away, guys. Waking up to ash and dust I wipe my brow and I sweat my rust Breathing in the chemicals I'm breaking in, shaping up Checking out on the prison bus This is it, the apocalypse Whoa I'm waking up, feel it in my bones, not to make my systems flow. Welcome to the new age, to the new age, welcome to the new age, to the new age. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, I'm radioactive, radioactive. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, I'm Radioactive, radioactive I raise my flags, down my clothes It's a revolution, I suppose We're painted red to fit right in, whoa, 
I'm breaking in, shaping up, checking out on the prison bus. This is it, the apocalypse. Whoa, I'm waking up, feel it in my bones. Not to make my system flow. Welcome to the new age, to the new age. Welcome to the new age, to the new age. Whoa, oh, what da da da. I'm radioactive, radioactive. Whoa, oh, what da da da. I'm radioactive, radioactive. All systems go. The sun hasn't died. Deep in my bones, straight from inside, I'm waking up. Feel it in my bones, not to make my systems go. Welcome to the new age, to the new age. Welcome to the new age, to the new age. What a da da, oh, what a da da, I'm radioactive. Radioactive, whoa, oh, what a da da, I'm radioactive, radioactive. Well, that was an awesome performance. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Next week, we'll have another live guest. For everything noteworthy, I'm Kristen Powers. Back to you, Kira. If that was not the voice of, the, of an angel, then I don't know what is. Uh, thank you both so much for sharing your talent with us tonight. That's all that we have lined up. Hopefully, you got some great fashion tips, learned a little more about the addiction that is Snapchat, and enjoyed some live music. I'm Kira Collins, and from all of us here at Marquette Live, have a good night and a great week. <laughs>